just hello everyone thank you once again for joining us right here on the global underwater explorers youtube channel my name as you can see below is nico luro host of gue's gue tv's creative imagery for under for divers and also in-house editor for the youtube channel thank you as always everyone who subscribes to the channel and who likes our content and who tunes in every monday we really appreciate the community that we have and as per our usual scheduling for the channel we have got uh, the rock star over to my left, Mr. Michael. <laughs> he's, got an, he's got an earworm. He's got an earworm today. <laughs> Good morning, Nick. How are you doing today? <laughs> Very well, sir. Yourself? Yeah. Good, good. I mean, good, good spirits. I always look forward to doing these with you. So, yes, highlight of the month. Love it. Yeah. Uh, and I hope it's a highlight for all of your month, too, guys. As always, please, if you do like our content, please hit the like button, hit, tickle the notification bell so you know whenever we've got a new piece of content that drops. Hit that subscribe button and share our content with anyone who you think may be interested in cool scuba diving content. And speaking of cool scuba diving content, Michael, what have you got for me this month? We have some good stuff this month. I want to start with a couple questions for you. Please. So uh, today, obviously, uh, as GUE divers and others, we, we dive tri-mix for deep dives, uh, oxygen, uh, helium, nitrogen mix. My question is, what was tri-mix called back in the day when this was just starting, when tech diving was just getting started? I actually believe I know this one. I'm going to say Heliox. Ah, that's... That's that's a good one, but no, <laughs> no cigar. <laughs> Sorry. Fine. <laughs> Should we try another? Right. Uh, no. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> okay. All right. Next question. What again? Was tech diving was just emerging, and we're starting to dive with what's now called trimix. Mm. What was kind of the operational range? Uh, that we seemed, you know, to, to be using Trimix in that seemed like the reliable range to do these kinds of dives. Depth range. Hmm. A range I don't have, but I've got a number that's buzzing around in my head for some reason. I'm going to pull 60 meters out of my ah, backside. That's, that's, that's a very good one, actually. Uh, kind of right in the middle. We'll, we'll talk a little about that. But yep, 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 yep. Do Why I get it correct? Was... Am I yeah, correct, though, for once? That's, that's yes! a correct. You're in the range. Yeah, finally. <laughs> My God, we've been doing this for months. And first one you've gotten correct. <laughs> okay, so final question. What was the one thing that you needed, everyone needed, if they were going to go do a Trimix dive? Uh, no, no. <laughs> uh, blessings from George Irvin? No, well, <laughs> that's not the answer. No, no. We'll, we'll, we will come back to that. Yeah, there, there was one thing that everyone needed. So, uh, and we'll be talking about that today. So, man. Mm. So, you ready it's to not, jump? It, oh, go it, ahead. It's not something silly like a dive buddy, is it? You're not going to do me dirty, <laughs> are you? No, no, no. And back then, many, you know, solo diving was uh, more, more open than, than I think it is now. Uh, mm. Yeah, so, yeah. but no, uh, it's not a dive buddy, though that, that was a good thing to have. It's always a good thing to have a dive It's always buddy, a good right? thing to have. Dive with a dive buddy. Mm. All right. right. So I've, I've done my usual terrible answering. What stories do you have for us this month on In-Depth? We have some great stuff this month. We're going to open up with our art feature uh, featuring uh, the well-known cinematographer and photographer Becky Schott. Um, mm. I've had Becky, maybe people have seen her on Facebook, certainly. Um, we have taken her, she loves the Great Lakes. There's a lot of great shipwrecks in the Great Lakes. And so we've asked Becky to pick her 10 favorite shipwreck pictures and talk to us about them. So we're featuring uh, 10 of, of Beck's uh, fav favorite shots. This will be featured in our October issues. So that's what we're leading with. I, I think it's it's pretty impressive with details of why. Yes. Can I take a guess that one of them is the Ganilda? Ah, you would be right, yes. And if you would and like the... to see footage of the Ganilda, please click the link above because we have a really cool video of the Ganilda on the channel right now. Little historical note, interesting. Ganilda was one of the first wrecks uh, that uh, tech divers dived mix on 
back in mm. the day. Uh, this was in the 1980s. A couple of people used it to dive, dive some, I, and I think they were diving heliox actually. So uh, on cool that dive, wreck. but cool, cool yeah, wreck. I'd really like to do that one. So story two, uh, last month, of course. I uh, hope everyone read the Electrolung story. This was the first electronic rebreather. It was available for sport divers. It was actually advertised in Sim Diver magazine. The question is, and and what we looked at this time is, how did people decompress? on the first rebreather. There were no decompression tables for constant PO2 right. breathing. Um, so this is a story again by Walter Stark who invented it. Now they were doing dives, they were breathing heliox. They were had heliox in the unit, which is just an oxygen helium mix. And they were diving to 100 meters plus. So nice. uh, decompression was a real issue. So we're gonna talk about that and, and the methods they used. I should say he also bought a recompression chamber to put on his boat as oh, kind of a contingency. <laughs> and they used it. So um, uh. anyway, so that's kind of a fun story. We also have a, a, one of our new writers, uh, Charlie Stringer, who is mm -hmm. uh, a scuba instructor who fell in love with free diving. She lives in Dob. So and it, quite, the issue is, should tech divers be thinking about e more about equalization the way free divers do? So yes. Charlie, yeah, yeah. So Charlie <laughs> yeah. makes the <laughs> Charlie makes the case that Valsalva equalization, that is pressurizing your sinuses with gas, you know, using your gut to pressurize the gas, which can be sort of harsh, mm -hmm. is not really such a good thing. Um, if you're mm -hmm. one of the 25% of divers who have a PFO, for example, uh, and may not know it, she argues that Valsalva can actually push bubbles, you know, through through your PFO and cause you to get bent. There was actually a Dan study she oh. cites that looked at this. And uh, it's quite interesting. And then we have commentary from people around the industry too, just what, what they think of this. The alternative to Valsalva course is frenzel decompressing, uh, decompressing, equalization, where you're just yep. using your mouth, not your gut, to basically open your, you, 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 Utopian. You station, you station say, tubes. You, you station <laughs> Your tubes. utopian going tubes. To dystopia. I live in America right now, so we're kind of in the dystopian state. It's a good article. I think it'll be thought provoking, and uh, yeah. And I found out a lot of uh, tech divers actually do do frenzel de uh, equalization, so uh, or, or gentler means. So quite mm -hmm. interesting for cave diving. We're we're going to take a dive into the famous Wrestle Cave in France by a story by a guy Kurt Storm who's a nice. tech instructor, some beautiful imagery. And Russell has a, a long history. Uh, the famous cave explorer, Olivia Eastler, that was one of the places that he first uh, explored uh, and others. So I think that's going to be a good story. And then um, we've got an uh, in memoriam, uh, one, of our, one of our pioneers, a guy named Bill Reneker, uh, Floridian. He owned uh, Cave Excursions Dive Store. is internationally known. He passed away uh, in his 70s, passed away a few weeks ago. So we have a great uh, tribute in all that uh, Roz Lund from Underwater Marketing has compiled. So um, Lovely. yeah, so we'll be talking about that. So you ready for our questions to uh, to go back to this? Uh, yeah, I'm quite... how we <laughs> I'm quite butthurt that Heliox is wrong. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I really thought I had at least two for three this week. Anyway, so Heliox is oxygen and helium, of just mm. a blend of those two. It's what the U.S. Navy dives. Trimix is oxygen helium, adding some nitrogen. You right. might be thinking of Heliair. It's a word that's used. That's where you're uh, you're topping a mixture of air off with helium to make a new, basically to make a trimix blend. Uh, it right. was easy to mix in the field. So, so <laughs> what we're doing is to go back. I thought it'd be interesting to look at the early days of trimix diving when mix was just started in the uh, the now called tech community, and go through that. So we have a package of uh, a couple of articles. Um, right. To answer the questions, what was trimix called? We called it special mix. This was a term that Dr. Bill <laughs> Hamilton, special mix. You're going to dive in your special mix. Uh, because there weren't standard gases back then, right? You were, you were uh, mixing the gas for the dive you were going to do. This yep. term was coined by Dr. Bill Hamilton, 
famous diving physiologist who created decompression tables. What is the one thing you needed if you were going to do a mixed dive? You could get the gas, you could mix the gas, but how are you going to decompress? So right. Bill Hamilton actually was creating special mixed tables. So we have three articles. One uh, from 1992 is an editorial I did called is the market ready for mix? And this was right on the eve of what was then called the Enriched Air Nitrox Workshop. This mm. was, um, that was the year that Nitrox was banned from DEMA, the Diving Equipment and Marketing Association show. And so we put together a workshop to bring everybody together so we could hash it out and move forward. So mm. that was my editorial. We follow that with uh, uh, an article by Dr. Bill, Bill Hamilton, understanding special tables, some things you should know. So he really talks about the origin of these tables and, and how we're dive, you know, how came to dive mix. One of his uh, famous sayings is what works works. I mean, you right. can build all this math and models, but if it doesn't work, it doesn't mean anything. It has to be based on data. And yep. uh, fortunately in the early days of mix, even though there were no very few self-contained diving, scuba diving, uh use of mix the navy had quite extensive experience and commercial divers did as well using helium mixes and trimix so there was data and that helped fuel the tables that we as tech divers then use so we have that i did a report back in the day called the trimix report and this is after about a thousand to two thousand dives had been done globally in the tech community and so this report kind of looks at the state of the art what the problems were, things like labeling gas and gas mixes, and, and kind of what, what kinds of dives people were doing and who was doing them. So uh, I think people will find it, find it really interesting. And then, um, and, then we, and then also talking about decompression. Uh, there were actually very few, you know, there were some Ben's cases, but uh, not a lot uh, okay. per se. And then finally, we end up showing uh, there was a group at the time, Key West Diver, headed by Captain Billy Deans, and he was really one of the pioneers of early tech diving. This was the first mix station, mixing station really in the sport diving community, and people came from all over the world to come and train. There were no courses then. You'd come for a week or two weeks or three weeks and basically you know, learn to mix your gas and do the dives and, and sort of yeah. mentor with Billy and his team. So we had a set of tables called the Key West Consortium Tables. A bunch of people came together, threw in money, paid Dr. Bill, and he created a set of tables for different depths. So we're running the tables to basically 76 meters, 250 feet, ranging bottom times from 10 minutes to 45 minutes. And then also a set of uh, repetition, rep, rep, ta rep, rep tables, uh, uh, doing more than one dive in a day. Anyway, that's yeah. that'll be yeah. yeah our history feature. And I, I think people, I think I think people will find it really interesting, contrasted to the day where we yeah, but of everything. Then we got a history piece full of gas. Yep. Of course. Um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Got to have the gas. <laughs> some wrecks, some caves, and in mem and in memorandum, bit of everything. I like it. Yep. Yeah, so it's going to be a good issue. It'll be out uh, Thursday, October 7th. I think that's the 7th. So a couple and weeks from... And where can people find it? Ah, so you can go to indepth.blog or gue.com forward slash blog, and that will take you to the issue. If you subscribe, it's free. Uh, then you will get our push emails informing you that there's new stories to be looked at. So... Um, I hope people will check it out, and it'll be out, as I said, October 7th. Do check it out, guys. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. And from me, as always, thank you for joining us on our latest edition of our in-depth preview with Mr. Rockstar Michael Manduno. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you do hit that subscribe button, like the video, share the video, tickle the notification <laughs> bell, do all of that good, lovely stuff. Don't forget to tickle the bell so you always remember when our content is coming out. Michael gets the joke. Very good. Right. And we will see you guys uh, next month with the latest edition of our in-depth preview, which, yeah, should be good. Michael, yes. thank you as always for joining. Thanks, Nico. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. See you very soon, mate.